Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Main Point. Thank you guys for coming out. We have a little bit of a lighter crowd without our, our restart group here tonight. Wow, that was a tongue twister. Huh? That's fine. I'm going to do that too. Um, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long week, but uh, blessed to be here again. So grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you all for joining us online. We praise and thank God for your love and support. Um, tonight we have a special guest with us. Uh, a pillar in our group. He's been here uh, from the beginning. And uh, it's been an amazing journey to see him work through the, the layers of healing in his life and to see how God has moved him into purpose. And I'm sure that his wife would attest to how God has been moving and working in his life. Uh, so I am honored, and it's a blessing to introduce to you tonight Kervin Horst. There you go. All right, guys. Thanks for sticking around, making me feel special. <laughs> What's up, Cyber World? I guess it's called Cyberspace. Welcome. Hopefully, um, you'll enjoy this evening. Um, so, what I want to do tonight is try to influence your life for the better and to you know to make a difference. I would, uh, my main concern is that I would do a good job in, in bringing honor and glory to the name of Christ tonight. And yes. If I do a good job at that, I think you're all going to be automatically encouraged, challenged, and excited, maybe even entertained. So, I'm going to cover quite a bit of ground, um, sharing first my testimony about uh, around roughly 15 minutes or so, maybe a little longer, and then... Um, after that, um, after a time of q and A, I'll share a message that I have for you guys. So, what it said, my name is Kervin Horst. I'm a disciple of Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm 40 years old, married, with three kids. But before all that, I was born to a plain Mennonite family here in the Effort area, um, Lancaster County. Old Order Mennonite was our official title, but also uh, called Joe Angers after some guy that was apparently able to influence a lot of people. <laughs> I find the name Joe Wanger, uh, to be called a Joe Wanger is somewhat offensive. Like, my name is Kervin Horst. I don't know who that guy is, but that's all right. I'm not bitter about that, but this is something that's kind of been on my heart. Uh, I feel like I'm not Menno Simons either, the founder of the Mennonite movement. Uh, the name I would prefer over all those is child of God, yes, disciple amen. of Christ Jesus. Um, I don't want to be labeled after a man that I don't even know and, and do things that I'm not sure why I'm doing. It's kind of where I'm coming from. I mean, let's see which one sounds more awesome or intimidating. I'm a Mennonite or I'm a child of God, a disciple of Christ Jesus. Amen. So that's amen. kind of where I'm coming from. Yeah. But uh, it's it's up to the individual. Paul, I think, <coughs> Paul, uh, Apostle Paul addresses this in uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe, when, when all the Christians there at the church, they were all picking their different teams, you know, and he's like, knock it off, you guys. He's like, boy, am I glad I didn't baptize a bunch of you. You might be calling yourself Apostle Paulinites or something. Stop doing that. Um, um, and... Uh, it's funny, I've, here we are all these years later still doing it. So it's kind of funny. Some things, some things never change. But um, Don't get me wrong, some religion is, some religion is okay, and you know, some traditions are great, but uh, I feel like they don't define who I am. I stand here a free man in, in Christ Jesus tonight, and I just hesitate to be, you know, to be uh, bound by any unbiblical or... Uh, or uh, just some restrictions that, that men sometimes would like to, to lay on you. On the other hand, before you get too excited, um, I, um, I'm not trying to relax the standard of holiness and obedience that Christ has, has called us to. What, I'm, what I think, what I'm saying is, under the, I think sometimes under the Mennonite interpretation of being a strange and peculiar people for the Lord, I believe some of us have uh, sadly missed the mark in this area. 
perhaps in our anxiety to be set apart from the world and to be different, uh, we have placed too much emphasis on the outward circumcision and spent a little, spent too little time being concerned about the circumcision of the heart. Um, I guess what what I want to say is that um, we just need to be careful um, if we're requiring. Uh, if we're requiring repentance and faith in Christ Jesus plus something else, um, let's just be really, really sure that that something else is is. Uh, let me see where I'm at here. Let's just be really sure that something else we're requiring of that person is something else that God is also requiring of that person. Lest we put a stumbling block in the path of sinners that are seeking the kingdom of God and be re by requiring something of them that God is not, we put a stumbling block in their way and prevent them. We turn them in doing so, we turn them aside and, and they might never enter the kingdom of heaven because of what uh, we're we we let, because of what we're requiring of them. So um, that's just some thoughts I had, and I kind of just want to you know, distance myself from, from some of those things. And just to be, um, for myself, if you have uh, repented and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're interested in bearing the fruits, the fruits of the Holy Spirit on the wall back there, if, uh, if you've done that and that's what you're interested in doing, then you are my brother and sister in Christ, and I will take communion with you in the Lord. Um, if you're not interested in the fruits, then you might have a problem. Um, if you're interested in those fruits in particular, you better hurry up, because I've been instructed to paint. Oh, really? Well, I know them by heart, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 3, 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge God, and he will make straight your paths. Not me, don't acknowledge me or Joe or Menno or um, acknowledge God and He will make straight your paths. Build that personal relationship with Christ Jesus. Making it personal means making it your own. Um, have your own personal salvation experience with Jesus Christ. Um, experience your very own miracles. Just, um, just experience Jesus. For yourself, um, for example, a few weeks ago I asked the Lord for confirmation <clears throat> on something I felt like He was asking me to do, or something He was calling me to. And I wasn't sure what to ask Him as I was praying. I just got the thought saying, "Lord, if if this is indeed what You want me to do, on my way to work this morning, show me a deer, a buck with his horns in velvet." And chances this time of the year to see that, or, or ever really, it's pretty slim, so. Um, but about two miles from my house on the way to work. <coughs> and there's this big, beautiful deer in front of me up on the hill, close to the road, almost at 322. And I was like, I was pretty anxious at this point because I was pretty sure I wanted to, it to be God's calling, but I was pretty sure I wasn't gonna see a deer, so I was kind of being disappointed already. Anyway, I was like, oh man, it's a doe, you know, but I slowed down anyway because I like to see deer. And he was almost at the road. I just gave it away. He... Anyway, so I stopped, mm. almost stopped, looked at him. Deer looked up at me, and between his ears, he had like three or four inch horns in velvet. Uh -huh. He looked at me for a bit, and I was like, oh. And he turned tail and, and took off, and I just like, I lost it, man. I was like, what? I had about an hour to drive, and he didn't. God didn't even make me fret and worry the whole hour. He just wow. three minutes from the house. He's <clears throat> and I was just like, Amen. "Thank you, Lord." Um, I tell you that story. I, it can encourage you, but it's it's not going to do the same thing for you that it did for me. Like that was for me especially. So that's what I'm saying, making it personal. Amen. Another thing. This week, I haven't been sleeping that great. Um, so I look at him, I was tired. I like, Lord, I don't think I'm going to do a very good job living for you today. It's like, I need some energy. Uh, and uh, that moment I was reminded of the verse 
Um, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. I was like, all right. So that sounds like he could supernaturally impart some energy into my life. But So I was encouraging. And uh, about 20 minutes later, just after I got on the turnpike heading west, there's this giant bird flying head on towards my van. Got your energy. And I'm like, wow. It's a bald eagle. Wow. <laughs> it was a bald eagle. Wow. Flying directly at me about 30 feet above the road and just flew directly over my windshield. I'm like, Lord, are you serious? <laughs> like, wow. That's awesome. Amazing. And I can tell wow. you that. And you'll be like, wow, it's cool, but <clears throat> you need that for yourself. Like, you can have that. And I'm starting to think, you know, God's been doing cool things like that all along. I just haven't had my eyes open to them. He's always been caring for me from the very beginning, looking back. So ask him for eyes to see. This yeah. stuff is crazy. Um, another thing, a miracle. Um, I was a raging alcoholic. God set me free for that. Amen. Just Amen. like that. No classes, no meetings, no recovery, no nothing like that. That's a miracle. That was especially for me. Uh, you might have a similar one if you're an alcoholic, but if you never drank, you're not going to have that miracle. That one's mine. That was for me. It can encourage you. That one was, was mine. So the personal thing is what I'm talking about. Massive faith-building moments in my life because it's personal. Amen. If you tell me a story, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'll believe you. It'll probably excite me a little, but it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. I wasn't there. So... Uh, what I'm saying is, yeah, experience Christ for yourself, just you and him. Go have some fun, laugh, cry, <laughs> do stuff, make memories, working side by side, building the kingdom of God. Surround yourself with people whose main focus in life is to bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> um, back to this religion's traditions and divisions in the church. Uh, I'm going to finish up on that. It's a touchy subject. But Paul had this to say, 1 Corinthians 9, 22. I have become all things for all people that by all means I might save some. No, Paul's not saying I will become a homosexual to reach the homosexuals. That's not what he's saying. He's not saying I'll become an alcoholic to reach the alcoholics or a drug addict to reach the drug addicts. Apostle Paul is saying, I will not limit God. I will not put him in a box and make him work inside that box. I'm going to let God be God. And I will adapt if I need to to reach a specific group of people. I will not force traditions and religions on them. Being very careful not to insist on an outward circumcision, but the circumcision of the heart. Meaning, if they have a heart change, he's not going to worry too much about what they're wearing, what they're eating, what they're drinking, or whether they're farming with tractors or horses. All those details are between you and your Lord. So basically giving them freedom Amen. in the non-essentials, um, or allowing room for God to personalize their walk with Him, not requiring the same thing uh, for each person. So that's kind of... Uh, um, yeah, so Paul is saying he's going to insist on repentance and faith in Christ Jesus our Lord as the only requirements for salvation. By the way, my wife is not from any kind of Mennonite background. She thought it would be great if I would give you guys some time to ask those awkward questions, Joe Wenger questions that you might have, but you never had the guts to ask anyone. So she's had a lot of questions for me over the years, and she finds it all very interesting. So right after I'm done with my testimony here, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes. If you have any questions, they don't have to be weird. Just She just finds it all intriguing and, and uh, we gonna offer you going to offer you a no-holds-barred Q&A session oh, here. Fun. Um, so get throughout, write the question down you might come across. And I'm going to do my best to answer them. Uh, I was one of 11 children born to my parents who owned a farm not far from here. What a fantastic way to grow up as a boy on a farm. Mm -hmm. We had 60 some acres to run around on. 
all kinds of animals to take care of and play with. And in my case, I have a bunch of siblings to play and fight with. And uh, I have one little sister I've, who I very sincerely told that I hate you and I will never love you. <laughs> and uh, I broke a lot of stuff, fixed a lot of stuff, shot a lot of stuff, learned how to weld, sort of, and hammered a bunch of random nails into my dad's shop table, which I'm sure he was pretty fond of. Um, a few of his kids held a funeral once for a kitten. I, if I remember right, I was officiating. <laughs> we were all crying, but somehow I managed to get it in the ground somehow. <laughs> uh, I'll, 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 I'll always remember that. Pretty cool. I learned that. <coughs> I learned about God and Jesus as a young boy. I love God. I was super tender-hearted, except to my one sister. But I ended up changing my mind about hating her eventually, and she's now the one that I'm closest to. And, uh, Does she remind like, you of this uh, a lot? Uh, we talk about it every now and again. But um, So God just loves to go above and beyond to show off his restoration skills. I, believe so. I hated going to church, though, and I only went because I had to. Uh, the sermons were preached in a mix of Pennsylvania Dutch, German, and English. Uh, no kids' activities or classes. We got the same treatment as the adults, which is fine, but I just wasn't sure enough to handle it at the time, I guess. Um, I don't know why I couldn't picture myself as a farmer growing up. I just never, just never thought that was for me. Uh, I love the Lord, and I had thoughts about being a pastor someday. And looking back, I think it was my love for the Lord. It's very, uh, very in tune, very in touch. Um, as a little whippersnapper, and I think it was my love, perhaps my love for the Lord, and, and the desire to be the godly man that got the attention of the devil and caused him to come down so hard on me. Perhaps um, we sold fruits and vegetables on the farm, so we had a lot of people coming and going, and I got to know quite a few less than reputable characters over the years. Some of these men play, uh, had a huge influence on my life, and not for the better. At a fairly young age, they supplied me with pornography and alcohol, which I really learned to appreciate. Um, I, was a, I was an emotional young man, and felt somewhat neglected and overlooked in a family of 11. I'm sure I, they loved me as much as the next ones. I was just extra needy, I believe. And, and it felt like I wasn't getting what I needed. But alcohol and pornography helped with that, made me feel good. Uh, I remember getting super drunk on the farm one time, getting the shotgun, walking around the fields, our fields and the neighbors for hours, just shooting doves. Like, I guess I shot better hammered than sober because it's still the record for the amount of doves I shot. I think it was like 20 something. <laughs> Way over the legal limit for the day. Wow. But, I hope I don't get arrested for that one. <laughs> um, wow. I didn't realize at the time that my love for the Lord was, was fading fast. As I got older, trouble, bad company, and everything was became more readily available. If you're looking for trouble, you can easily find it. Um, yeah. I was in a relationship with a, a Joe Aaron girl for a few years, and she was probably the strongest force in my life to keep me from going off the rails. And then when that didn't work out, it was... It was Pretty much game over for me. Uh, time for room springing. I can be one of your questions and later if you don't know what that is. But uh, so I was baptized in the plain church, but my heart wasn't in it. I had a pretty poor understanding of the gospel and what it meant to live a life surrendered to Christ. Uh, my rebellious lifestyle made my already not great relationship with my father a lot worse. Uh, I guess he loved me. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, I'm sure he did, but I hated him there at the end, and I decided to move out, rent an apartment with my friend, didn't tell my parents, just one day I grabbed, grabbed a box on Saturday morning and threw some clothes in and walked out, uh, very bitter, mama was crying in the bedroom, and I felt a little bad, but I just kept walking, so um, I was bitter, I was a bitter person. And here's where I want to get a bit vague about what happened the next 10, 15, 20 years or so. I'm, uh, I'm not here to glorify Satan or my sin or risk triggering someone tonight to, to sin. So 
God gave me a different way that to describe what happens, I think, and that will make sense to you. And uh, I call it the satanic snowball effect. So listen to this. So um, when you go to build a snowman, you start with like a very small amount, or it doesn't really work too well. You get a pack, get it going. Same with Satan and his sin snowball. He rolls you around the backyard for a while. That's fun. He allows you to have a good time. Nothing too crazy. What you don't see is he's slowly ed edging you to the, uh, closer to the steep downward slope. Once he's got you packed up good and you're ready to roll pretty well and you're in, he just laughs and gives you that little nudge over the Send edge. It. Send it, laughing. Um, not moving it that fast at first, but you start picking up speed. Before you know it, you're completely out of control, barreling down the hill, destroying everything in your path. Your friends, your family, your relationships, your finances, your health, everything's getting, whatever's in your way is getting wrecked. Um, at the bottom of the hill waiting for you is a place called hell, and most people roll right on into it. But for some reason, God, in an unbelievable act of kindness, built this huge rock wall at the bottom of my hill. It's called Rock Bottom. I hit that thing at like, I don't know, 300 miles an hour maybe. And my life, my snowball in my life was completely shattered at that point. Um, pieces everywhere. The only thing that ended up in hell was my sin because the very next thing I did after hitting the wall was give my life to the Lord. Thank you. Praise God. So, um, that's going on six years now. And we're still picking up the pieces. I suffered a lot after I hit the wall. I told you I was going really fast, right? So <laughs> it hurt a lot. Um, but the good Lord's helping me sift through the rubble. We're fixing what we find that's salvageable. And uh, when we come across some remaining sin hidden in the row, he helps me toss it over the wall into hell where it belongs. It's hard work, but we've made a lot of progress over the years, and I'm looking forward to the finished product. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Now, <laughs> Paul Harvey. <laughs> now for those awkward Joe Winger questions. Go for it. But keep it PG. We're online. <laughs> When you were in Rosefringa, did you uh, participate in the singing or and volleyball playing? Early on, yeah. And then Early on. into partying more? Yeah, yeah. It started there, partying and attending, but then stopping attending the church functions and attending more worldly functions. So Nevin's question was about Rosefringa, but before we do that, we have... Probably half of our listeners who don't know what it is, so by all means. Rome Springer. Rome yeah. Springer. Rome Springer translated to English means running around. It's a it's a stage in a, in the uh, a stage in your Mennonite life. Uh, youth events. Youth gatherings. Youth gatherings. Yeah. yeah. Where you get a little more freedom uh, as a as a yeah, as an older person, maybe you're starting at like 17, 18, and where you get more freedom, your parents kind of letting you feel your way, and this is a place where a lot of people end up throwing off all restraints and just um, getting out there and into the world and submersing themselves in all kinds of worldly things, and this is where, this is at where you're supposed to, or the hope is that you'll make, after experiencing the world, sin and whatever it has to offer, all the excitement. The hope is that you will make your own decision to return to Christ. But uh, it, gets, it gets pretty wild. So that's room spring running around, basically. And hopefully you would have gotten it all out of your system at this point. Right. That hope is. Yeah. But, did yeah. you have in your room spring? Did you have a? What did you do during that time? <clears throat> like, what was? The the that your your church had planned mm -hmm. these youth gatherings for what purpose? Like, they have events planned, or there were gatherings to meet 
potential mates and to, to hang out with people your age. But then what happened was the, the snowball effect was I would go there, but then I would start drinking there, and then I would stop going there, start going to the bars, and then, and then from there to Atlantic City and to Vegas. And the so you played volleyball sometimes, <coughs> posing at the gatherings? I singing. have before, yes. They yep. were singing? Sure. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yep, play games, even some dancing. Yeah. Yep. Square right. dancing? Yep, right. <laughs> Two left feet? Two left feet. Did you have a horse? I had a horse. What was your horse's name? Disney World. Disney World. He was a race horse. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> nice. I know when I was uh, in my teens, ripping and running. Yeah. I did a lot of uh, driving under the influence. Mm -hmm. Would you have done this in your with your horse? Uh. Perhaps I'm not sure, but mostly in a in a car. Yeah. yeah. Thousands of times <coughs> behind the wheel, which yeah. is. And never a DUI or an accident, which is just crazy. How old were you when you left? Uh, 20-ish. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember a lot of things, but... Me too. Yeah. Yeah, but I would drink and drive a lot. Some mornings I'd run to the window quick in anxiety and like, see whether or not my car's there. Mm -hmm. And then if it was, I would run down and do a circle around it quick and see if I hit anything on the way home. So, um, where did you meet your wife? At the bar. Yep, she was there. We had the bar where we hung out, pretty much. We had a favorite bar, and then she had just broken up with her boyfriend, I believe, and then she had joined her mother at this bar for dinner. And then she saw me and took a liking. I saw her and said, she's way out of my league. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know she was into me. I was like, that'll never happen. But it happened so yep so we partied together for three years yep oh uh, <laughs> back to the Joe Wanger questions um no, I lost my train of thought ah it'll come who else was going to say something about your wife so coming in like in in relationship was she a Christian or did you did you after you got married, I'm supposing you you found Christ, or how did that work? Uh, yeah, so we partied together for, I don't know how many years, but then after I hit the rock bottom, I turned to Christ, and then shortly after that, she did too. Wow. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. So I thought of it. Okay. Why the horse? What's that? Why did Joe Wingers have horses? See, that's what I mean. I don't know. <laughs> These are the things that... You weren't taught that. To call me. <laughs> so you don't. So you can't like do stuff conveniently or. or Maybe just, separation from the world. Yeah. yeah. Would it yeah. would it have been so you're not so fast paced as the world to hold you back so you don't go places so quick as easily? I believe so. Less convenient to to mm -hmm. go to Atlantic City, I believe. Yep. <laughs> and it makes sense. I yeah. mean, in a way, it does, but. Um, you know, if, if if some of these things are required, you know, of the wrong people, they're gonna they're gonna say tell you to get lost, and then um, perhaps that's the end of their their seeking the Lord. Now, a real question that most of these people won't get: Why the black buggies when the Amish have gray? <laughs> Remember when I said I don't want to do things? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> that's. That's if you guys hard. didn't know that, that is a fact. Yeah. If I'm you sure. see a black buggy, it's a Mennonite. If you see a gray one, it's a What's Mennonite. a black buggy with a window in it? That's the Joe Wanger. Joe Wanger. Joe Wanger had a black buggy without one. See how offensive it is. That's how offensive it is. You're a Joe Wanger. No, I'm not. I'm curving. I have a question. <laughs> has a question. What's, what's the difference from a, a Joe Wanger Mennonite and any other? Um, just uh, non uh, unbiblical or non non biblical liberties, I would say. Yeah. Like 
Like I was, I don't know, I guess I was sort of in there, right? You said different men. I'm a different man, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, horse and cow. Gotta have to have a horse, yeah. Uh, that spike also was I had no window. So, and what? But that's their. Mostly outside, of, rules, mo I mostly outside appearance. Yeah, it would be the differences. Yeah. What is it? Outside, the more conservative, they're more concerned about how you look on the outside. Okay. Right. My grandfather used to talk about, he would have been 17 or 18 when the, we were laying conference split from the Rockdale Conference. The Rockdale yeah, Conference being more invited. We were laying conference being the black father. <laughs> Yeah. And he said, so cars had come into play and people were buying cars and this became a problem and whether they should have cars or not. And he said the war was that bad that literal brothers could not be in the same room with each other because they were fighting over this. And he, he said that something that's always bothered him for years, he said, where was Christ in the middle of all this? Where was the love? Because this is what we were fighting over. Right. Yeah. I guess we, that's, that's, that's kind of what I want to distance myself from tonight. Like, if you guys... I'm not going to require you okay. to, sure to do that. Yeah. You were talking and, and about prejudice a little bit. And, uh, <clears throat> in your, I'll just say it this way, your belief in one guy, mm -hmm. basically, I thought that's what you were saying. It yeah. made me think of, you know, that, um, like when Jesus went before Pilate, he said, I am the truth. Right. right? And um, for me, I always, um, I always believe that too, like that, that there's one God. So where I'm going to go on this next question, or not question, but I may be ignorant, but you know, I don't, I don't get all the different like denominations. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't quite understand all that. Kind it's of for our own glory. Everything's written yeah. based on whatever. I believe it's for our own glorification. Like we're we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna be different from you. But um, Paul said, "Is you know what? Stop it, God. Like is Christ divided? No, he's mm -hmm. he's not. And uh, I think it's gotten pretty bad, and it's probably worse in the U.S. than anywhere else. And I think I think we're uh, as a church here in the U.S. We're not ready for what's coming, and mm -hmm. and uh, I think." What's coming is going to serve where the Lord is going to. What's coming, I think, is going to serve as a, a way to bring us together as a church. Thanks for commenting on that. But yep. Yeah. But I agree with you on the traditions aren't necessarily bad in themselves. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ must be first. Yep. And then if you wish to do these things, that's between you and God. Yeah. Not everybody else. Well, right. if we start making the tradition that this is before God, we we seriously right. got the cart ahead of the horse. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah. What one concern you could have would be like um, if you know, before you refuse communion with a person in the Lord, <coughs> uh, you will want to check yourself and say, you know, am I refusing communion with him? Um because he hasn't been saved, or am I refusing to commune with him because he doesn't look like I do? Um, so be a little weird, leery of calling something unclean that the Lord has called clean. So just just be very careful is what I'm saying. Amen. Nothing wrong with a lot of this stuff, and I enjoyed, I had a great, a great child. It's not a bad way to grow up, but just... Uh, less fighting is what I'm saying. Right. Unite, come together. We're gonna need each other coming up. I think for what's coming, we're gonna need, we're gonna need each other. I think uh, God's gonna unite His church here, even even, <coughs> even here before we get to heaven. He's gonna unite it in a special way by what He's gonna bring upon the land. One church order, not one world order. Right, it's coming. That's Both are coming. Right. What's up? coming. We probably should keep moving. I do have a. Uh, a message for you guys then. But, Amen. Um, but I'd like to... Uh, I don't see lyrics on that one. Just click it. I think it's the right one. We'll see if they we'll come sing along. Pay attention to the words. This has to do with the message name. Let it so Take
rage to come out of this boat again Under the crashing waves To step out of my comfort zone At the realm of the unknown where Jesus is And he's holding out his hand But the waves are calling out my name and they laugh at me Reminding me of all section, Kervin's wife asked, ask him how he converted me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thought about sharing that. <laughs> Thought about that? sharing that. I was going to tell you to ask her sometime how that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I did what I want to step away from tonight, uh, personally and publicly. I tried to force on her religion and traditions um, and uh, praise God, you did not accept them as means to salvation. Um, it did not go well, and yeah, but she ended. almost left me because of it. It ended so, well, though. It ended well. Amen. She did accept the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior, and she gave me grace. But yeah, I was was not. She was hurt, and I was hurt, and 
I've heard other people as well. And so Amen. Just be very careful, guys. Very, very careful. Amen. God works it. God gets a little creative sometimes in what He asks people to do, and it's, it might look a lot different from what you're used to. So. Amen. You're you're both an inspiration to to the world around you. So right. thank you for being obedient. To pretty that. pretty crazy. Uh, non-resistant Mennonite boy, and she was a an Air Force brat. Uh, yeah. Non-Mennonite met, and <laughs> two worlds collided, and here we are. I was meant for each other though. Out, out, absolutely. I was in quite a few other relationships and, and, and obviously it's meant for each other. None of them worked out except this one. So let's pray. Lord, help me to speak your word with all boldness as I ought to speak. Mm -hmm. Give ears to hear to those who can't hear and eyes to see to those who can't see tonight. Amen. Amen. So the message title is The Truth or a Lie. We get right into it. I think it might go a little over time, but probably shouldn't a whole lot. Right up front, I want to tell you the most important truth there ever was and ever will be. The truth is, there is a God, and He loves you, and He cannot lie. Okay? This whole thing about Him not being able to lie is both the best thing and the worst thing about God. It's the most comforting thing. And also the most terrifying thing in the whole world. One of the biggest lies, I think, is uh, either there is a God or there's no God. The lie could be there is a God, but he's a liar. He doesn't mean what he says. Um, that, that would be the lie. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not man that he should lie, or the son of man that he should change his mind. As he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not fulfill it? Um, maybe you're looking at me thinking, prove it. Prove to me there is a God that cannot lie. And I'm saying, no, you you prove it. Or better yet, ask God to prove it to you. I'm just another human being. Uh, I could be lying to you. You don't, you don't know that for sure. I could be a messenger from Satan sent to deceive you tonight. Um, you don't know that for sure if you don't know me well. Uh, most of you here tonight have asked God to prove himself to you, I believe, by asking um, for him to send the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And because he has done that for you, you also know the truth. And because you know that, you know I'm not here to deceive you tonight. Amen. Um, others here tonight or listening online might not know the truth about God and, and might be thinking, who does this guy think he is? He's just another person trying to tell me what to believe, just like everyone else with an opinion. Uh, and I don't blame you for being skeptical or even annoyed. Everyone is trying to get you to believe something. Um, in order for something to be true to you, you have to you know, choose to believe it. and. Um, you have to make a decision about whether to believe it or not. And to make a good decision about it, you should probably do some research or try it out, um, prove it somehow. Um, this requires action from you, though, and sometimes not, that's not that much fun. Um, it's easier to be lazy and just believe everything you hear or just go the other way and don't believe anything you hear. Um, so... Maybe you're being lazy. Maybe you don't feel like looking into it. Maybe you're afraid it might be true. Maybe you're afraid it might be a lie. Maybe you don't care. Uh, for myself, after some very strong encouragement from the Holy Spirit, I decided to let God prove himself to me by asking him to forgive me for all the terrible things I've done and to send his son, Jesus Christ, to save me. Um, if you don't know who the Holy Spirit is, he's that person inside of you that's keeping you from killing me right now. Basically, he's, he's a, a moral compass saying it's wrong for you to kill a curve and horse tonight. That's not. Um, uh, and he'll, he's the one that tells you that you do need a savior. Um, he's so much more than that to people who believe, but that's kind of where it starts. Um, So, since I know the truth about God, I'm pretty sure that you know 
that there is a God. Um, no matter how, uh, you know, no matter how much you try to tell yourself that he doesn't exist, um, or how badly you want to believe that he's a liar or he doesn't exist, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure you know he exists. And so if you know he exists or you're, you have a feeling he does, why don't you ask him to prove himself to you? Um, to prove that he's not a liar. He's not angry with you for being doubtful or scared or whatever might be holding you back. He loves you very much and would love to prove and would love to prove that to you. So if you need some ideas on how you could ask God to prove himself to you, um, ask him to make you fully aware that you need a savior. If he does not do this for you, then I am a liar and God is also a liar. So don't be afraid. Ask him to make you fully aware that you need Savior. And he'll do that for you. He said, ask and you shall receive. And if you ask for a fish, he's not going to give you a snake. <laughs> That's a promise from the Lord. Um, don't be afraid. He loves you and wants to care for you and to be your friend. You need this friend. I know you do. Um, for those who do know the truth, why do you still believe a lie? Why do you still believe that God is not good all the time? Why do you still believe that God does not love you all the time? Why do you still believe that God is not with you all the time? Or why do you still believe that God is not in control all the time? You, you know the truth, and yet, maybe most days or some days, you believe a lie. Um, you know the truth, but because of some circumstances or whatever you're going through at your life at that time, um, any given day, instead of believing the truth, because of what you're going through and how you feel, you believe a lie. We have a condition. Our minds come factory programmed to believe a lie. It needs to be trained to believe the truth. Romans 12, 2, you heard it a bunch of times. The easy English tra Bible translation says it well, I think. Do not become like the people who belong to this world. But let God completely change the way you think, so that you will live differently. Then you will understand what God wants you to do. You will know what is good. You will know what pleases God. You will know what is completely right. We need to relearn how to think to be able to consistently believe the truth. It has nothing to do with your feelings. Emotions are awesome. What a great gift from God. With the right emotions, you can make water come out of your eyes. I love, I love a good cry. It's, it's healing. But so many things affect our emotions. So this is me on an emotional roller coaster. I work construction. Hit my thumb with the hammer. I am triggered, emotionally triggered to anger because of the tremendous pain. Then someone brings us free food and cold drinks, and I'm happy again, feeling good. And it starts to rain, now I'm wet and miserable. Feel good anymore. Then someone, <coughs> then someone says it's time, let's call it a day, and I'm happy again. So like really all over the place, a lot of things going on, out of control emotions. Emotions, when they're healthy, are meant to be enjoyed, and perhaps motivate us in different ways. They're a gift from God to enjoy, but not something to live by. We are to live by the truth. Almost anything can affect our emotions, but nothing affects the truth. Amen. It's still the truth, and always will be. You're the one that's changing. Here's an example for you that I came up with. That the Lord gave me. It's pretty funny. I think you're standing outside on a sunny day, not a cloud in sight. All right. You know God loves you, and you're feeling good. You're feeling good. <clears throat> now you hear a whisper in your ear. Someone's whispering, it's raining. God doesn't love you. <laughs> you look around, the sun's still shining. God still loves me, though. I don't feel as good anymore. I'm not feeling as good as I did. The whisper comes again, it's raining. God doesn't love you anymore. 
This time you feel drops of water on your head. The sun's still shining, but it feels like it's raining. It feels like it's raining. Um, now I'm not so sure that God does still love me. What I do know is that I feel terrible. So, because of the way you feel, you decide to believe the lie because it feels so real. It feels like the truth, right? But if you had taken a few steps forward in faith and believed what you know to be true, you would have been able to figure out that it was Satan whispering in your ear while holding a sprinkling can over your head. <laughs> so, yeah, choosing to believe. You're battling a porn addiction. It's been 10 years. You've tried everything you could think of to quit. Nothing, but you've done nothing but fail. You hear the whisper, you will never be free from this, you pervert. It's been so long, it feels true. You start to believe it's true. That's the lie. Um, the truth is, if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. That's the truth. It's only a matter of time, guys. Choose to believe. You don't feel like it, I know that. You're suffering from health issues. It's pretty bad. You, you hear the whispering, God doesn't love you. If he would, he would never let this happen to you. It feels true. I bet it is. I bet it's true. I bet he doesn't love me. Nope. That's the lie. The truth is, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for evil. Plans to give you a future and a hope. That's the truth. Um, the war is in your mind, people. God, <coughs> God is telling you the truth and wants to believe that. Satan is telling you the lie and he would like you to believe that as well. That's really all there is, guys. The truth and the lie. Don't feel so bad for you. Don't feel bad for so easily believing the lie. That's, that's our default setting. But let God change the way you think so you can believe the truth more consistently. It is not that we cannot believe the truth. We're just, we're just prone not to. Jesus said, repent and believe in me. Why would he say to people, believe, repent and believe if they're not able to believe? It doesn't make any sense. You can believe whatever you want to. You do it all the time. Um, right now you're making a decision about whether or not to believe what I'm saying. So you can believe, but don't try to feel a certain way in order for you to believe something. Uh, maybe put your feelings in a box for a while until you're better at, at believing without them. And then once you're good at believing and you know that believing isn't feeling, then you can get the feelings back out and enjoy them. Uh, back to those who have not yet believed in God and Jesus Christ and asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior. Probably the only reason you've not done so is because someone or something has lied to you about, about who he is and that God is also a liar. Right now, he's most likely the exact opposite of, of who you think he is. And the abundant life he offers is most likely the opposite of what you're experiencing now. Or you might think your life right now is pretty good without Jesus. It's not, or at least it won't be in the near in the near future. Um, I can say that because I was there, guys. And my life 
My life sucked compared to, to now. Mm -hmm. It's rough. My life is still hard now sometimes, but it won't always be. And besides, I have my Lord and Savior walking right beside me, even carrying me sometimes. Even if life here on earth is hard, I'm going to be okay. Um, and this is why, because my father is a king, and that makes me a prince. And when I'm done here, I'll receive my inheritance from my heavenly father, which will include eternal life, peace, joy, honor, Riches beyond belief. That's why I'm going to be okay. You, on the other hand, if you do decide to believe the lie, you will also receive an inheritance from your father. And that will include eternal damnation, terror, shame, and dishonor, and continual unbelievable pain. Once again, let me just assure you that you can decide to believe whenever you want to, no matter how you feel. Um, and you'll have to make that decision at some point in your life. Uh, do it right now. Choose to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It shouldn't take you long to decide once I give you the options. It's either do you want to go to heaven and live forever with God and always be happy, always be with friends, always be joyful, always be peaceful, always be honored, and always be loved. Like this is the real place. And these things are true about this place. Or do you want to go to hell and live there forever? Always be alone. Always be in unimaginable pain. Always be in darkness. Always be dishonored. Always be bound hand and foot. And always be on fire. This is also a real place and these things are true about that place. There is no escaping from either of these places ever. And that's true too. So choose quickly. There's not much time left, guys. Choose quickly. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life so that you and your family might live. Choose life, people. Do it quickly. Choose life. This is the one you want. I love you guys. That's all I got. Amen. Keep up the good work, Kervin. Thank you. Thank you, Kervin. I hope you all were as blessed as I was by Kervin's message. Uh, does anyone have any comments or questions for Kervin? What really stood out to me tonight is when you said that personal relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Now that's the pursuit all of us should be, and that's where I'm at. But when you said... Go, have, go laugh, go cry, go make memories with Jesus. Like that, that sunk in. Like I, I envisioned Jesus next to me like like I would any of you. Hey, let's go do something. Why can I not do that with Christ? Like, you can. Yeah, so thank you. That, that, that stuck. Good, thank you. I want to second that. Choose ye this day what you will have. Life or death, blessings yep. or curses. Yep. And Amen. going to, I think it's Joshua. I just lost my train of thought. That's but all right. Choose you this day what you have. Life or death, blessings or curses. Right. We can go blindly in, in fear of faith and just believe what we will. Or mm -hmm. we can ground ourselves in God's word, root and ground it in God's word. And there we're stabilized sunk in the truth. Nothing shall be Amen. Anything else? Yeah, I really like what you said about it's not just our emotions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> our relationship with Christ supersedes any emotion we have, and it needs to. Yeah. <clears throat> we're not just in Christ when we're happy. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I like what you said too. If you laugh with him, you cry with him, whatever it yeah. may be, and pass your man at him, yell at him. <laughs> but at least talk to him. Yeah. You know, talk to him. There's something to that. I let people tell me right there that man at God that good, yell at him. At least talk to him. You, you gotta start the conversation somewhere. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that, yeah. When God is silent, there may be a reason. But he's always there. 
just gonna add, <coughs> when you say you should have a personal relationship on your own, mm -hmm. I thought that was a very <coughs> good point. Mm -hmm. And um, it makes me think about myself, but then like other people, you know, that you know, and, and you need to allow them that freedom, you know, like you're saying, to develop that spirit for themselves. All right. and I just thought that was an excellent point. So thank you. Yeah. Isn't it crazy that when I think about it, like God appoints, he knows I love wildlife, deer, foxes, great. And he appoints a deer or an eagle to do his servant, to bless me. Like, he required that eagle. I don't know if that eagle knew what he was up to, but um, he required that eagle to hit the turnpike, fly at an altitude where I can see him, and cruise right through at the appropriate time. It's crazy. <clears throat> yep, he's not too busy with some guy over in in China, you know, with his problems. The seven billion other people yeah, in the world. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's what makes it so fun, guys. Like, he cares about you. Enough to say to that deer, go out and show your horns to this young man who's questioning my calling in his life. And the deer was like, I would love to go do that this morning. <laughs> and there he goes. Yes. And he's like, now look up. And he looks up, and then I see him. But guys, Great. this is not a legitimate prayer to use in hunting season. <laughs> oh, I, I've tried that. <laughs> I get it. I'm not that great of a hunter, so I get a desperate straight sometimes. <laughs> Try to bag a deer. Anyway. Happy Anybody hunting. Else? Thank you, Kevin. That was, that was a good message. I appreciate you. it. Yes, I sure. feel that too. I almost want to cry sometimes. Mm. It's all right to cry. It's a good emotion. I, I wasn't Didn't able quite, to. Didn't cry, but it was like, wow. Oh, yeah. Mm. I, I, I can't say much. I don't know what to say. I'm just overwhelmed with what you had to say. But great. I thought I might have some words for you tonight. You're special to me, Claire, and I, I want to see you victorious. I'd be happy to walk with you. Thank you. Sure. That's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's a beautiful place to be when we're overwhelmed to the point where we just don't even have words anymore. Yeah. We're just overwhelmed by the goodness of God. I like different uh, comparisons you made about putting our emotions aside, and putting this aside, putting that, aside, <coughs> putting God down the center. And when we have things straight in the center, we can bring these things back into our lives with a different perspective. Right. Mm, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. See, I. I struggle. Uh, I was diagnosed bipolar, so I mean, I'm pretty stable now. There was a time where I was very, 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 very unstable. Um, and uh, so, a lot of head, a lot of head games for me. So I have to choose a lot to believe the truth because it doesn't feel like the truth because of the way, because of what's going on in my mind. It's hard to choose. Yep. But the analogy of a box was excellent. I'm Put sorry. Something in a box. That's that was. Oh. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Get it. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. That far too often. I think we we uh, think we want to have this time or relationship with the Lord after. And we can have it here. We oh have, yeah. Uh, yeah. If we have Jesus right on our lips, as things transpire during the day, you know whatever it is, yeah. are we are we communing with them mm -hmm. as a personal? You know, right. I missed out on that way too. Yeah. Long, you know, there was a there was a uh, prayer I had to Jesus one time. I was like, Lord Jesus, like don't come back just yet. Like, I want to get to know you better before you come back, so that when you come back, 
like the meeting is going to be so much more special because I know you so well, and then you're going to come and I'm going to be like, and, and get to meet you. Like, as a new, like as a thief on the cross was saved that day when he acknowledged Christ, but like, they had just met, so maybe the relationship wasn't as special quite as someone who had been walking with the Lord for, for 50 years closely, you know, get to know each other. How much, pretty nice. how much different would we act if we would keep that focus, vision of Jesus right here in front of us on the cross, yeah. uh, crying to his Father, yeah. uh, why had he forsaken me, and blood driven out mm -hmm. of his wounds, and, yeah. uh, and, and then, you know, how that would help us if we would just keep that vision, that focus, which we all should. You know, yeah. Keep that focus in front of us all the time. And yeah. I'm talking to myself. Yeah. Isn't that the goal? To keep it in front of you? Yeah. Because yeah. <coughs> that's a better life. Yeah. And uh, you keep talking about sin death. You know, I never quite looked at it that way, but, uh, you know, it's, I, I get it. I, I, read, I read that, and maybe it didn't come. Yeah. but I, I, I understand it a little better just even you talking about it tonight yeah you know, think yeah is that that there's 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 nothing positive about it yeah. Yeah. about your sin and that's right you know, yeah so so that no matter how many times you hear it it's just amazing how different times it just sticks to you I guess a little bit mm -hmm. right Kevin, we were. I, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, Joe. I was in church the other week, and the pastor gave an analogy. Uh, we sing worship songs. We read the Bible. If Jesus Christ was sitting here right now, would we sing louder? Would we read the Bible more intently? Absolutely, we should. We should sing loud read the Bible, pray as if Jesus Christ were sitting beside you. Because he is. And in our hearts. Yeah. Piggyback, piggybacking off of what Dad said um, about Jesus crying out to his Father on the cross, I think it's important too to remember that he was crying out because of the separation that he felt from his Father in that moment. And that's something that we can rest assured on if we don't continue on this path of Christ and the cross that's the same separation we'll have to endure so it's important to not only remember Christ hanging there on the cross for us but also remember that if we don't dedicate our lives to him that's the same separation we'll have to experience and that's it's you know hellfire is is a scary thing but Separation from God, you can't, you can't put into words what being cut off from hope would feel like. Mm -hmm. But in Christ, we have that hope, so let's stay the course, stand firm, keep pressing on. And we have each other to rely on for the journey. Ask God to give you eyes to see his kingdom here on earth. That's what I've been doing. He's been helping me see him working here. Like, um, like I said, he's been at it. I just haven't seen it. So you need eyes to see and stop with the coincidence garbage because that's not going to help you There's out. No such thing. Yeah. Kerbin, we've, we've seen the, uh, the evidence in you and the change. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Karen, you you greatly helped me understand more tonight. I was also diagnosed with bipolar, schizophrenia, whatever. And I really love that. And just hearing you say tonight about how to put the whatever in, in the thoughts or the, the lines, feelings and emotions yeah, feelings in a box. For now. Yeah. That's like because my Okay, impulsive. That's the big yeah. thing I deal with. I, 
I've learned to think my things through. When I'm 20 foot up in the air, I'm scaffing, I'm projects or waving around. I can't be impulsive. Man, I move fast, I work fast, but I gotta think my stuff through when I'm laying down on the ground. Right. You know? And just like, I mean, thank you. Yeah. Hold off on my feelings. Think this through. It's yeah. gonna be all right. God is with you. Anyone else? Does it make you feel awkward when the camera just stops? <laughs> Stop right here. Tony's good here. No other tension. Tony. <laughs> but I, I agree with you, too, on the fact of getting your feelings set aside that you can focus on the truth. Just reading the Bible, the worst mistakes that were made throughout the Bible were made based on feelings because somebody forgot to look at the truth. Starting with Adam and Eve, it was feelings that got her to eat the fruit instead of sticking with it. She knew the truth. Do yeah. not eat from this tree. And you go down through history. Abraham did the same thing. Instead of believing the truth that he would have a son, he had his, his handmaiden Hagar, and that, and that created a problem. But you go down through history, and every one of them, when they didn't focus on the truth, started focusing on their feelings a little too much. It created a disaster. And there's something to that. There's great value in that. I just added it real quick, Curly, you said something wrong. Uh, you said, I didn't want to go out him back because I needed to get to know him better. Mm. And I just thought that was just super respectful. Mm. And, and that rang a bell with me because yeah. I think a couple of weeks ago I said something to you as well, like, you know, how do you stay close, you know? Because I'm not as mature. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, it's like prayer and, and, and reading and something about um, what Floyd was just talking about, which is skipping my mind. But I, I if God goes away, you know, Separation. that was my whole point. Like, you know, you, you, you get closer or you're, you're, you're trying to say, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And then you have. The trial, I guess, or the challenge, or the test, or you know. So, but when you said that, that that rang a bell for me because I, um, I, um, I want to get more mature. Yeah. You know. Don't make it. If you're not a super structured person, then don't make your your spiritual life like too structured. Like I have to. So you're more spontaneous. You're going to sit down and say, oh, to grow in the Lord, I have to do 30 minutes of prayer time in the morning and 30 minutes in the <laughs> evening, and then I have to read this and then sing a song. Like, you're not going to, that's not going to, that's not going to help you. That It's going to feel like a chore then. It's going to become a drag. You don't Just, feel like that at all. Don't, uh, feel like like don't make it unnatural. Day, don't know? make it unnatural. God made you special. Just be special. Mm -hmm. That's the cool thing about him. Like, he Amen. he allows you to be special in your own way. Like, I always wanted to be funny, and I always thought I had to be hammered to be funny. But <coughs> turns out I can make people <laughs> laugh all the time at, at work and stuff. People and the, think it's funny, and I'm sober. And I'm like, wow, God, that's really special. So I, I always wanted to make people laugh, and now you're allowing me to do that. Sober. Amen. There's a couple other things where I was like, that's what I always wanted, and I thought I had to do this to get it. Yeah. Now I'm looking in my past, you know, because I know God. I knew God. I've known God my whole life, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, why well, wasn't it good enough? You know? That's the question, not the question. That's, okay, your past. You learn from your past. You try not to hold on to your past, because you got to go to your future, but your past teaches you things. It should, yeah. You know, and it, it teaches you where you came up short at yeah. times and things like that. And that's that's uh, that's a it's, that's a place I know that I came up short. Yeah. God gave us the Old Testament as people's past that we can learn from, and then we have the New Testament to to go in on our own with with the Lord. So, people's past these are, these are reminders and. And warnings for us, Old Testament. So, and our own past are warnings to other people that saw us make a huge mess. Yeah.
It's our pasts, our trials, our tribulations that build us up as believers. And through the process, we can count it all joy. Frank, what can we do through the process? Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Frank's ready for a nap, man. Hey, uh, hey, Dad. I'm signing off. Um, speaking of special people, who's the best woman in the world? Your mother. Amen. <laughs> hello, mother. I see you on there. Say hello to everyone. Hello, All right, guys. Hey. Hi, Facebook people. <laughs> Back to Kerbin. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, hey, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we're very grateful for you, your love, your support. Hey, one more thing. Tony, what are we doing on Saturday? Kensington. We're going to Kensington. Kirby's going too. Oh, all Kirby's right. Going. Is my mom watching? Can you watch kids? <laughs> <laughs> I get to know that answer. Uh, we have, we have uh, a couple spaces available if someone would like to uh, try something new to step out of their comfort zone and join us. Uh, reach out to Tony or I. Let us know. To Lynn, uh, anyone, uh, any one of the leaders are on the board. Dave, uh, my dad. Man, everyone's here. Mm. All the big um, shots. Yeah, the big shots, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, again, we just thank you so much for joining us tonight. Come back next week and uh, join us online next week at 8 p.m. to hear Nevin share his story. And uh, I forget who's on for meals, but I'm sure it'll be great. So uh, God bless you all. Have a great night. Take care. Peace.